Hey there, friend. Life is too short to be beaten down by crazy curveballs, stress, and drama. Want to distress, choose joy, and get healthy? If this sounds like fun, you are in the right place. Let's get inspired by experts in happiness, health, and wellness to create the epic lives we all crave and deserve. It's time to lighten up, ladies. Let's dive right in. Thanks for joining me today. I am so excited that you're here with me because we are going to be talking about a topic that is seriously something I believe everybody should have learned about at school. And life just can't be amazing without it. And what we're talking about is doo -doo -doo, setting boundaries. I know um, we don't like to talk about it because these are some tough conversations if we have relationships that haven't been working out. But when you do start creating boundaries, life can change dramatically for the better. Imagine a world where all of your relationships are healthy, uplifting, and respectful. No more negative or toxic people who make us feel bad or suck the joy out of our lives. And when they do crop up, we know what to do. Well, all of this is possible, but with the amazing magic of setting boundaries, and I won't pretend that this is fun or easy, but that's why I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest. Her name is Danita Sparling, a relationship expert, and let me read to you her official bio. Danita is a certified health coach through Coach Training Alliance, who specializes in helping women blossom so that they can experience healthy relationships. She is always learning and growing to provide the best and latest resources for her clients. Danita has earned a certification as a Neuro Linguistic Programming Master Practitioner and received her certificate in Marriage, Family, and Human Relations. She is currently working towards becoming a Certified Family Life Educator through the National Council on Family Relations. And the thing I love about Danita is she is a lifelong learner, just like me. And in fact, I met Danita through my NLP training course, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is essentially the psychology of human optimization. She's been a master NLP practitioner for some time. I, when I reached out in the course program's Facebook group to find an accountability partner, she generously offered to review the foundational program along with me. And since then, she's shared a lot of fantastic resources for personal development with me. And I knew I wanted to share her work with like-minded women who are looking for ways to improve their mindset, self-care, and resilience. And something else I love about Danita is that she has a no-nonsense, straightforward style. She is realistic and she is all about empowering people to take responsibility for their own health and well-being and to take action with really great tools. So let's get into the interview and learn about the importance of how to get started, what to expect when you do, and I'll check in with some takeaways at the end. Hi, Danita. I am so excited that you're here with us today on this topic of boundaries. Yes, I am excited too. Yeah. One of my favorite topics. Perfect. Because it's one of those things where at this late date in my life, it wasn't something that I really knew you could do something about. It was, you know, I, I, life happens to me and I react to it. And uh, the whole idea of it is just something that is life changing. So thank you so much for agreeing to share your deep knowledge about this topic and how you help people. I was wondering if we could start it with you sharing a little bit about yourself and how you got into the work that you do. Okay. Um, so I am about 43 years old <laughs> and I've been married for, I was married for 20 years to a man that I did not set boundaries with. And I learned the hard way that you will lose yourself if you do not set boundaries. And because I didn't, we, we ended up in a divorce, which is very hard. I had four children and it's very hard on you emotionally, financially, and in so many ways. So boundaries for me is something that I learned the hard way that is very important to have. And now I'm remarried and I have a wonderful husband, but no matter who you are, you always have to set boundaries because everybody steps over boundaries. <laughs> And so I've learned in my life um, the importance of boundaries. I am, after my divorce, I got into coaching. I became a certified uh, coach and I'm also working. So my specialty yeah. is working with families, mostly women, 
who um, are struggling because they didn't set boundaries. They struggle with low self-esteem. They struggle with exhaustion. Mm. And I help them find themselves and develop a sense of confidence, knowing who they are so they can be strong enough to set boundaries and experience healthy relationships. That resonates so much with me, Danita. I went through a divorce in 2006. Um, same thing. I guess you have these unspoken agreements that you set up between any kind of relationship, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you realize at some point, wow, this isn't, this isn't working really well, but don't know what right. to do. Um, or maybe it just sort of like you react to it because you don't even realize it was this unspoken agreement. Yeah. And you're right. It, it just sort of it, it, not knowing about it can really derail a relationship yeah. and the dynamic and having an awareness is something that can really change everything. How did you learn about boundaries and begin to apply it? So uh, when I was going through my divorce, it was emotional trauma is emotionally traumatizing to me. And so I started to go through counseling. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. was, um, I got with a counselor who was excellent and he taught me about boundaries and I had to learn to set boundaries to get through the divorce <laughs> and survive it. And so he walked me through the process. So I personally went through the process and one of the most difficult things that you could ever do, which is going through a divorce, I learned how to set boundaries. And um, after going through that experience, I realized how important it was that not only do you need to set boundaries with your spouse, but with your children, with, with anybody, mm -hmm. you know? And so through that experience, I learned the importance of boundaries. And so I went on my own journey to learn as much as I could about setting boundaries and studying myself and taking um, courses online to learn about boundaries. And I've just been gathering for the past this has been five years, um, information on how to set boundaries and why it's so important. So you ask the question, why? Why are boundaries important? Well, there's two main reasons. Mm -hmm. The first one is because I've learned that you are responsible for your own protection. You cannot run others to protect you. And you have to take responsibility for that. And so that's one of the number one reasons why we need to set boundaries is we need to protect ourselves emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. We have to do that. So, and number two is, and this is something I learned, um, is it's not just for you. It's also for the person that you're setting the boundaries for as well. Um, deep mm. down inside all of us, I believe that there is goodness. And when we mistreat each other, we don't feel good. We just don't. And so when you help others, whether it's your children or your spouse to learn to treat each other properly and not mistreat each other, you are doing, you are doing something for them as well. And so, and they're, they'll be happier if they learn to behave in a more, um, appropriate and respectful way, they will be happier too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I remember um, there was something I was doing in a relationship. Um, it was a friend relationship. And it wasn't until like years into it, she mentioned something I was doing was yeah. upsetting. <laughs> and and it's, it's very, very specific yeah. right, to each person. And it made me feel yeah. so bad because I had no idea. And it was easy me, for me to change what mm -hmm. I was doing. So it was just teaching me how to talk to her in a way that doesn't trigger her or make her feel like I was in, in, like implying yeah. anything. But the fact that she didn't say anything and yeah. I didn't know felt really bad. And it was just that conversation and I stopped and didn't mm -hmm. have to worry about it again. So yeah, I think it's really powerful because it's just like, it could be just a conversation yeah. away. Um, but would you say that the way you draw boundaries is the same? Like what are the different kinds of boundaries? That yes. So there's a right way and a wrong way to do boundaries. So I like to, when I, when I talk to my clients, I give them three types of boundaries. There's, and I use a fence as an analogy. So your home is like you, okay? It's your spiritual, your physical, your mental mm -hmm. well-being, emotional well-being. And a fence is your boundaries, okay? And when you go to someone's house, some people mm -hmm. don't have fences at all, right? 
and they allow people to trample mm -hmm. all over their lawn, <laughs> put trash on it, you know, come in and out whenever <laughs> they want. That is an example mm -hmm. of someone who has absolutely no boundaries and no consequences for those who mistreat them. And sometimes we let our spouses and our children mm -hmm. mistreat us with no consequences whatsoever. And that is very um, damaging to us. It creates low self-esteem. It creates um, a feeling of exhaustion and no respect for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, so that is the first. And that, that is just, you just don't have boundaries. You know, you don't correct people. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second one I would have to say is like a prison wall. <laughs> And that to me is like, you know, a prison wall is like 12 <laughs> feet high and it has a razor sharp wire at the top. And that is, you know, people who don't trust anybody mm -hmm. and assume everybody's out to get them, you know, and that's a lonely mm -hmm. life. Uh -huh. That is a very lonely life. And you're not being who you are if you don't connect with people. We are social creatures that need each other. And so if you are refusing to connect with other people, to become vulnerable, to allow people into your life, then you are going to live a very lonely life. And so that's, that's the second boundary. And then the third one is my favorite one. And it's the white picket fence around a farmhouse. <laughs> that's the kind of boundary that you want to strive to accomplish. And it is a beautiful boundary. It's very welcoming and very loving, right? But yet there's clear mm -hmm. um, lines as to where your property is, right? It's, it's very obvious. This is where her property mm -hmm. is, but yet it's, it doesn't push people away. So that is what we try to achieve as far as the types of boundaries. And I love the analogies that you put in there. I, and I've definitely been guilty of yep. both of them too, <laughs> and I'm working on evolving the, the white picket fence. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely no boundaries. Uh, you, you get burnt out because people have open access and there's no, yeah, there's no yeah. line in the sand. And so I remember just kind of being mm -hmm. a people pleaser and being a caregiver and not really thinking about my own needs. And so you're just kind of responding yeah. and it gets into the space of you feel obligated to do all these things and you're yes. guilty not. <laughs> well, you can actually have yeah. control over this. Uh, the other part is that, like the prison wall. I know that there's a saying that people either think that the world is safe yeah. or not safe. So it's like the flip side for the people who don't think that maybe they've mm -hmm. been burned. And I, I was kind of like that with relationships. I yes. mean, my divorce. I think it's one of the situations where you get into that negative impact of no boundaries and suddenly you go the opposite. I think People just tend to, when they get hurt, do the complete opposite and then don't let anybody in and nobody, you know, there's landmines <laughs> everywhere. And so it's really difficult to function because you're not letting anybody in. And I remember I was so secretive and so protective of my time. And, you know, it's sort of like lockdown, like nobody's getting over these boundaries. But you're, like you said, people can't be there and they can't support you and they can't know what you need. Um, when you're distancing yourself and locking yeah. them out. And, and at the end of the day, you end up not having a true relationship because people don't even know who you yeah. are. They're too busy trying not to get into those landmines. because Right. Or they give up on you and because so, they feel like they have yeah. to walk on eggshells to keep yeah. you happy, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So can you walk us through when you're talking to a person, they come to you and they ask about boundaries, what does the process look like in terms of how they begin to yes. build that? Well, I have five things. Five main, I call them principles, which are truths that you have to learn to apply yourself. So the first one is like more of a mindset. And that is that you, you have to let go of the expectation that you can change people. So a lot of us think that, you know, we have to change someone. But the reality is we have no control over that person. And so as soon as you let go of that expectation, you open the door to changing your focus to how can I change this person to how can I influence this person, which is a much better perspective. So because we wear ourselves out. A lot of times we get frustrated because we have expectations and they don't meet those expectations that we have for them. The second thing that I teach them is um, to set a boundary, you cannot, and it will not be successful if you do it with anger in your heart. 
So you need to come to peace with this person in your heart. That doesn't mean when, when I mean coming to peace with them is that to look at them as a person mm-hmm. that they have feelings, that they have thoughts, that they have struggles and they're doing the best that they know how to do at this point in their life. And also what really helps me when I set boundaries is to remember that I probably cross people's boundaries too, right? We're all guilty mm-hmm. in doing that. And so if we can remember that we need to be a little more humble and remember that we're not perfect either, then when we set these boundaries with these people that we'll do it with a loving heart rather than anger, setting boundaries with anger will only turn them away from you rather than teaching them with love and kindness and influencing them for better. So, so that's the second one. The third one is to determine exactly what behaviors are not acceptable to you. And usually what I do is I have, you know, if I'm working with a mom or a spouse, I have them write down, tell me exactly what it is that you will not put up with that is not acceptable to you. And I'll have them write it down. Um, And then the next part is determine what you will do if they behave that way. Because like I said before, you can't control them. And I see a lot of people set boundaries and say, you know, Mm -hmm. if you do this, then you have to do that. Well, usually it doesn't work because you can't make people do anything. (laughs) You just can't. I've tried it before with my kids. Sometimes they're stubborn and I put their (laughs) foot down, even my spouse. I put the foot down down and say, no, I'm not going to do that. So you have to decide what you will do if they behave that way. And so, you know, one example is I was working with a mom who who had a young child that would throw a tantrum and he would do it for her attention. So she came up with this idea that every time he threw a tantrum, she would just go into the other room and lock the door and just leave his presence. So he didn't get any attention and he would stop. So, and this is, yeah, so this is, this is where it's very personal. You know, we each have different situations and we have to figure out what's best for us, but those are the, that's the principle. And then the last one is absolutely be consistent. You have to consistently set that boundary and do it. So when you're deciding what you will do, you have to be able to do it in any circumstances anywhere. So it has to be a realistic thing that you say you're going to do. Like if you tell them, I'm going to, um, you know, slap you if you do that, that's not something you're going to do. So it can't be a threat like that. (laughs) It's got to be realistic. So um, those are, let's see. Yeah. So that's usually what I do. When I take someone through that, I have them ask themselves those questions and then find out. And then they think through their situation and what's best for them. It's so empowering because you get to start thinking about the things that make you unhappy and begin to re-script what really would help that relationship yeah. be better and then give the other person the opportunity. And, and like you said, I, I, a few people are just creatures are. of habit. So if you just do it once, even, I don't know if you're hearing like my Boston Terrier, even he knows if you yeah. don't mean it. And so um, if you're not mm-hmm. consistent, I mean, they're just get. Sometimes they just forget, and then sometimes it's just a force of habit, and sometimes they just think they can get away yeah. with it. And so, when you keep repeating it over time, and you know they know you mean yeah. business, and and they're not going to get what they want. Like in the example of, you know, the mm-hmm. the little one going a tantrum or trying to get attention. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And dialing back to what you're saying about making a person doing something to do something or influencing. Can you give an example of what you mean when you say influencing another person? So um, influencing means that you connect with them in a way that they will actually listen. So you develop a relationship with them to the point where they respect you rather than force or, you know, anger Usually people who feel forced into something or are treated badly, they don't listen. (laughs) And so to influence someone, you actually need to work on the relationship. And to influence someone is taking away the idea that you can control them and focus more on your circle of influence, which really is what can you do rather than what do they need to do. 
So to influence is focusing on what you can do differently to make the relationship better rather than what do they have to do. Oh, yes. And that makes sense. The next couple Mm -hmm. of steps of making sure that you are being thoughtful about how you're communicating with them, where you're not just being an antagonist. Yes. So that they can feel like you're not pushing against them. You can't fight what's not resisting. So you're not pushing at them. You're being open and you're coming at them from a place of understanding and trying to be compassionate. Yeah. And also... If that makes sense with the other step you were saying that you, we also cross boundaries. So it's not like we're coming at them from a place that we're better. Right. Judgmental. Uh, and just kind of like being open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that gives us space because knowing that we also cross boundaries, that they'll probably also have things that they want to say mm-hmm. to protect their boundaries. So it's a mutual thing. It's not just us asking for something and demanding, right. but just showing, hey, you know, we're coming in a place from let's improve this relationship. Mm-hmm. And knowing that we're flawed too, or, you know, we're not perfect. And then also just letting them know that they're, they're trying to do their best. Yeah. And so they don't feel like they're being attacked. They're being understood. Yeah. And it's more based on what you're saying about influencing. It's more collaborative. And now you're both going towards the same goal with a, in a place of respect mm-hmm. and kindness and wanting to just be better. Yeah. So. And there's actually a principle you can follow to help you to influence rather than to, because the goal is not to attack their self-worth. We need to keep people's self-worth intact. And so to do that, when you make statements like, I'm going to set this boundary because I feel this way about something rather than you do this, you're attacking who they are. When you say you do this to me, you're saying you're a bad person rather than putting it back on you and say, I feel this way when you do this, then you're not attacking their self-worth. So that's a, that's a great way to, to remember to use those words when you are setting boundaries. Say, I feel rather than you are. Yeah, that's a, such a good tip because there's nothing to attack there. It's sort of the focus is on how it's making you yeah. feel. And also, when you think about setting boundaries, I feel like People can think that you're setting something up to maybe put yourself in a place where there might be conflict because now you're shifting things around and you're changing the rules. So it makes sense that you're you're approaching it in a a, a way that's not going to necessarily cause conflict. So on the flip side of it, though, if it's something that the person doesn't feel like, um, is there some tip or trick you can share if maybe the way that you're setting the boundary, is there like a typical reason why it doesn't work out? And what people can do about it. Um, So when I went through my counseling, (laughs) he explained to me that when you set a boundary with someone, it'll get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And you need to remember that because most people don't like boundaries in a way because it's like you're correcting them, right? And most people don't like to be corrected or told what to do. So he said, usually what you do is you hang in there and two things will happen. He said, and this is mostly in, you know, like a relationship, not with a child necessarily, but if you're dating someone or you're with, you know, someone in a, in a relationship, they will either conform to it and the relationship will improve or they will leave the relationship. So you have to decide, is this someone I actually want to have a relationship with? Because some people are toxic. And so you have to decide that for yourself. If this is a relationship that you actually want to keep going. And so that was something that was really important to me is I had to decide if this was a healthy relationship. And even though I had set boundaries and I tried my best to do it, he wasn't keeping them. And so I had to, it, and it ended, the relationship ended. So yeah, that's such a, yeah, so interesting. I mean, so it is really courageous, but necessary for your happiness. Yeah. I think for both sides, right? Because if your boundaries aren't being upheld, that person can't be super happy either because you you keep doing something and they keep doing something bad yeah. and it becomes a not so happy relationship on either side. Yes. And so it's a signal that maybe something needs to change if it's not in the same direction. Yeah. But it's really tough, isn't it? Because people don't like change. No, they don't. And um, <laughs> they're afraid of conflict and also feel that breaking a relationship is the worst thing that can happen. Yes. And yeah. So what, what would you say to somebody who's worried about these things and start 
having that be in their way. Yeah. You know, a lot of people stay in abusive relationships because they feel stuck in there, you know, or, or they feel like what they think is love is love, but it's not, you know? And so you really have to sit down and say, is this a healthy relationship? And if it's not, then it's probably not the best thing for you, but give people an opportunity to change. You know, that's what boundaries do because you may be in a health, in a very unhealthy relationship right now, but give them out the opportunity to see if they'll work it out with you. So, but to, don't confuse love. <laughs> love also in, includes, and I think the world struggles because we really don't know what love is. You know, it's, um, love isn't this toxic feeling that you have. It's, it's respect and it's kindness and it's sacrifice. You know, that's what love is. It sounds like, so if you're already in a relationship, um, these steps can really help. And I can see why you might benefit from having somebody guide you, coach yeah. you and help you be accountable and see some perspective around it because just going out there and, and trying to create boundaries where there weren't any before or when you had boundaries everywhere mm -hmm. and you're trying to shift things, it, it sounds like it, it's work. It, it takes time and it takes diligence and perspective and real honesty, mm -hmm. like self-honesty yeah. and honesty with the person you're in relationship with. Yeah. Ideally, I guess you start um, setting the boundaries when you're in a new relationship so that foundationally, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> things are kind of in agreement. They know that this is part of, is that how you started in your relationship that you're in now? And of course, with kids, it sounds like yeah. it's something that you were already aware of. Yeah, I definitely was um, watching for signs <laughs> of abusive behavior <laughs> when I was dating. I educated myself, mm -hmm. I read a couple books so that I can identify certain behaviors that I knew that I didn't want to have in my life. And so that was really helpful. Um, but I think the thing that is probably most helpful for me moving forward and seeking out a healthy relationship is to try to do it with love, you know, because most people are really good. And I've learned a lot of people just have never learned how to treat each other properly, you know, whether they grew up in an environment where their parents were harsh or they've had harsh relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and so if you are loving and kind, they'll want to change. You'll influence them for good. So, um, and it's really hard because I, I'm really not for divorce, you know, <laughs> I'm really not. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do. Uh -huh. it, it is so hard on relationships. So, um, yeah. if you can make it work with your spouse, I would, you know, and just try really hard to set those boundaries because it's not fair to you to live in a relationship where you're so miserable, but, yeah, um, true. if you can learn to set good boundaries and really work with this person, it's so much better than having to go through, go through a divorce. So that is something I would definitely encourage people to do. And when I work with someone, I definitely don't jump to, you know, if they don't, if they don't fit this mold, you know, you need to get rid of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, and that, that's where remembering yeah. that you're not perfect either really mm -hmm. helps with yeah. that. So I'm not sure. Did I answer that For correctly? Sure. It, it, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it's like you're saying, you know, people come from different backgrounds and different upbringings yeah. and I don't, this topic of boundaries, I don't think it's something that people really stop and think about. It's something, yeah. like I said, I, you just kind of react to your life and you feel like however you were treated, whatever you grew up with was acceptable and okay and normal because there was no benchmark, no, you know, contrast to that. And so it's really interesting to really be empowered with the idea that you can cultivate relationships that make people good. And eliminate anything that really doesn't work for you that doesn't make you happy doesn't make you feel supported or loved or understood and it would be definitely ideal to be able to salvage a relationship and it's a good example for 
the next generation mm -hmm. for your kids to be able to see that in action so that they're aware from that time in life. I mean, wouldn't that be nice to go back in time and know that these things are really important. And then on the flip side, if it's a relationship that's not salvageable, it's good for the kids to actually see people practicing self-care and boundaries and how, what that looks like truly yeah. to protect yourself in and make sure that you teach them to do the same. That's what we want for our kids to be around people that are good to them and mm -hmm. for them and be able to protect themselves. So something that you said too was really interesting. And I, I know that I was a, uh, looking around in your website, but you were talking about toxic personalities. Yes. And, and it, the question was, are you? And I thought, oh, yeah, that's true. What am I doing? <laughs> um, so can you, can you explain what that means so that people who are looking at creating boundaries, some of the things to look for so they can know as you're going into a relationship or even in the ones that you're, you're involved in currently, how you can spot that so you know that you don't keep judging and butting against something that may just be what it is. Yes, I would say there's two things that stand out to me. Number one is controlling. Mm -hmm. Controlling is mm -hmm. a sign of a lot of fear behind the person and it stifles you. So controlling behavior, which is they try to tell you who you can be with, when you can be with them, how long they can, you know, you can do that. And they just, they tell you, you know, what you can wear, what you can't wear or... <laughs> Or mm -hmm. you have to get the permission to do, to go shopping and buy things that is very controlling. And so that, that yeah. is a sign that, um, that is not a healthy relationship. They have some fear that they need to address before they can be in a healthy relationship. Um, number two would be, um, so people like to say, I don't, I don't know if you're someone who somebody said, you're just too sensitive. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, usually that's a sign that they, they may be too sarcastic. And, and I have mm -hmm. met some people where they use sac sarcasm as, you know, I'm just joking. Right. But I don't mm -hmm. agree if you're with a man and in a relationship and they just kind of joke around and say something demeaning to you and try to make it sound like it's funny. That's, that's a bad sign. <laughs> You know, yeah. you, you want to avoid people mm -hmm. who, when you're not even married to them, you know, and they start making comments that make you feel less of a person, that's not a healthy relationship. So those are the two things I would watch for control and, um, any comments that are demeaning to you as a woman. So they're very clear. I yeah. mean, you had really ex uh, specific examples. So it's not like, Hmm, I wonder, <laughs> you know, if that's really the case or not, but it is really clear. Because I've been in relationships, yeah, feeling constricted yeah. and controlled. Like, yeah, because the other person is controlling, you feel controlled or kind of like you can't be who you are mm -hmm. or be yourself because they're trying to create you into something that is not necessarily who you yeah. are. And um, yeah, with sarcasm. Yeah, I guess usually sarcasm is a way of saying something, but taking the edge off, but still saying the right? thing. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, just because it's sarcastic doesn't mean that they don't mean it. Yes. And so that's a really, really good point. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. So what, what does life feel like after you're, you're in the white picket fence? And mm -hmm. is it like a process or do you feel like you get to a place where you're in the white picket fence and you live happily ever after. How does that work? Yeah. Well, you, you know, relationships come, you know, in and out of your life. And so it's, it's, it is the process. Mm -hmm. Um, mostly. So one of the things that I have learned is how to do it without, um, becoming hardened. You know, if you can set boundaries with people with a calm, loving heart, then you're doing pretty good. You know, um, unfortunately, a lot of women who have been hurt, they will become hardened and they will become man haters. <laughs> so always checking yourself, always checking your heart and seeing where it's at, because we can go up and down really quick, you know, and we can we can become angry very quickly, you know. And so when we see ourselves getting that angry 
we need to check ourselves and come back down and remember that white picket fence and, and do something to calm ourselves, to bring peace into our lives. You know, everybody has things that do that. For me, it's prayer. Um, for other people, it's meditation. Uh, whatever it is that calms your heart and brings you back to that gratitude, to that love, that's the best way to stay within that white picket fence. It's showing up with that loving presence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and being able to respond, not react. Yeah. Um, I love all of that. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense. Uh, you know, as I'm doing, and I love that you are somebody who's always learning <laughs> and you're always sharing resources with me. I'm like, oh, let me, <laughs> let me get on top of that. That's really great. Um, but just always thinking about ways to be better yourself mm -hmm. so that you can influence people and come at them from a place of being present and accepting. It's like you said, people go through life with their set of lenses. And so you kind of can read into things in the wrong way. Yeah. And, and I love what you're saying about knowing when a person is toxic, but also like, just look at yourself and, and think about whether, because I, I've been in seasons in my life when I was super controlling. And yeah. somebody said that to me, like, you are, you're trying to control everything. Why do you have your finger in that pie? <laughs> What? First, you're, 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 well, they didn't say it in loving kindness. So I was resistant and offended. And, but then when you sit with it, you're like, well, why am yeah. I doing that? And like you said, it's from a place of yeah. fear and contraction and trying to make sure that your needs are getting met. Mm -hmm. So everybody's just trying to find their happiness and peace in the world. And I think that when you give a person a place where you're setting boundaries, you give them permission to do the same. Yeah. So, yes. Um, I think that's probably a good sign yeah. that that person is, has the potential of both like creating a really, really good relationship where yeah. your needs are met. And for in, in this relationship that I have now, I felt like, you know, divorce is so expensive. And when you have kids, there's no really disconnecting from that relationship. And it's interesting, Danita, because we ended up communicating even more, maybe not more effectively. I'm not saying that, but we were communicating even more after the divorce happened. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of like we still needed to figure out. And that's where I guess by hook or crook, getting through raising two kids together I was kind of forced to not in an elegant way. Like if, I think that if I had this conversation with you, it would have been a lot easier, but putting boundaries up, like you throw it at them yeah. or you <laughs> try and manhandle it into them force. Like you said, like make them do it. And then it was like really messy. But at some point it, it, it occurred to me that if a person is not speaking kindly, just because you're on the phone already or they have access to a text message, it doesn't mean that you have to sit there. No. <laughs> and for some reason, the, there was a rule in my brain. And so it was really empowered to know that, oh, you know what? I can hang up and I can tell this person, oh, this conversation is getting really unproductive. I'm going to hang up until we're both calm and can come back to it. Click. And didn't hold that boundary. And so it's kind of like you said, didn't take it seriously. So it kept happening. And then one day I decided this is not going anywhere. So I'm going to be consistent. Good. And so, so things change. But I feel like a good sign that you're, you're in a good relationship is that it's okay to say what you think and have difficult conversations. And then in the moment, I guess, depending on the person, maybe the person needs to walk away, but maybe express that they need to walk away mm -hmm. or figure it out, but that they come back and complete the conversation. Yes. And that's actually a boundary that they really recommend in spousal relationships mm -hmm. is to take a break, you know, and you can do that in a loving mm -hmm. way. You can say, look, I, I want to have this conversation with you. You are important to me, but right now is not the best time to talk about this. We're both angry. We're going to say something that we regret and we're going to hurt each other. And because I care about you and I respect myself, I think we need a break. That is one of the best ways to deal with a relationship where it's starting to get, you know, out of hand. And that happens with every relationship, right? Mm -hmm. There are times that mm -hmm. we just yeah. don't get along. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's so helpful to speak that way because I'm the type, okay, we're going to resolve this right now. Right. And don't you walk away from me because I need to, because I'm going to feel bad. Yeah. Uh, and not so with my husband. I mean, he, he needs to walk away and think about it for those exact yeah. reasons. And so sort of like feeling our way through initially, he just said, um, I'm out of here. And he storms out of the room. And so I'm sitting there thinking this is going to keep happening right. and I'm spiraling out. And it, when we were calm, I was able to say, this is how I felt when you did yeah. that. And he was able to explain, well, 
this is how I feel when things start escalating. It's just a matter of protection for himself, um, but also for me. So yeah, just it, it's a it's a process, isn't it? Learning how another person thinks and works mm -hmm. and honoring that it, it's going to be sometimes uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's something that it, it, like either way, um, at the end of the day, I, I like what you said about honoring yourself. You're not abandoning yourself mm -hmm. and only you can do that when you're able to set up boundaries and you're, you're protecting yourself and you can trust yourself. Mm -hmm. It's this whole thing for me as a caregiver and as somebody who's taking care of other people and forgotten about myself and the whole equation, boundaries are so important, especially because so many people are relying to, on us as parents, as women, a lot of times, and I don't want to overgeneralize, but we're the ones who are keeping the relationships together yes. and, you know, the day-to-day -day and everything. Mm -hmm. And so more important than ever to really have those boundaries in place. Yes. Yes. So. And I agree. And, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, there's one, one thing that, you know, just to, to finish it off is, you know, not only do you need to set boundaries with others, but you need to, you need to decide how you want to treat other people, you know, and you need to set those boundaries mm -hmm. with yourself and say, I will not do this and I will not do that. And, you know, I don't name call, I don't scream and yell. And it just deciding how you want to treat others, because that's who you are. You know, we're all good at the core. And if we go off track mm -hmm. as to who we are, we're going to be miserable. So if we want to be happy, we need to learn how to treat others and set those boundaries with ourselves. That's such a great point. I think about how you want to treat other people. Mm -hmm. So, so what are some really like helpful resources or things that you uh, you did on your journey that really helped you be able to create better boundaries and improve your relationships? Well, I have a couple of my favorite books <laughs> that I've read. <laughs> and so my favorite one is How to Hug a Porcupine. And I love it. <laughs> and it shows on the cover of the book, it, it shows a man in armor. <laughs> And if, if you go on my website and you see, I have a test on there to, to see if you are toxic. Um, <laughs> that's where it's his quiz. So his name is Dr. John Lewis Lund. And his book is How to Deal with Toxic and Difficult um, to Love Personalities. And it helps you understand, mm. you know, what is toxic? What does that mean? you know, mm -hmm. and it helps you to identify toxic behavior in yourself because honestly, to some degree, we're all toxic and there's different levels of toxic, you know, toxic people. Mm -hmm. There's some that are highly toxic and there's some where, you know, we're normal human mm -hmm. beings, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I love his, he actually, my two favorite things, and I, I'm going to create, um, some classes on this. I'm really excited about it, but he teaches you how to give criticism and he Ooh. teaches you how to receive criticism and he has some steps that he goes through. So that was one of my favorite okay. things, you know, because I, I have to say one of my biggest struggles is many times taking criticism, especially from my husband. Yeah. <laughs> you know how you mentioned Me sometimes, you know, you, you can be controlling at one point in your life. Mm -hmm. I, I found that I can be easily offended if I'm criticized. Mm. And I think it was part of my upbringing, mm -hmm. you know, um, but to take his steps and to apply it has been very helpful for me to overcome that challenge. So I highly re recommend his book. I always tell my clients about him and have them read it mm -hmm. whenever okay. um, they're dealing with that. So a difficult relationship. <laughs> I love it. Whether it's a child or a spouse. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Everybody has one. I get, well, yeah, most of us have one or maybe we're not even aware. Like you, like you were saying, not being aware, yeah. but just sort of like feeling it. And I, I'm excited to learn more about the program you're putting together. So when it's all ready to go, maybe I can post it in a link um, in the okay. show notes so that people can get access to it and be, continue to find out more about it from you. Just because um, the more I delve into the topic or learn about the topic, the more it makes so much sense. But it's not something they teach you in school. And it, it, I think people happen upon it when they start. Like, I think people still don't understand why they get burnt out or they feel resentful or they shut in or they overreact or they underreact. Yeah. Or they keep getting traumatized over and over and over again. And they think it's just 
you know, what's going on. The world is unsafe and that's just the way it is. So I love that this is so empowering and a mutual mentor said the quality of your relationships impact the quality of your life. So I love that oh, this absolutely. is the focus that you have. I'm guessing that's probably why you do what you do because yes, you've seen the impact that it's made in your life. Yes. And it's true because your relationships can either bring you, you know, your greatest sorrow or your greatest joy. And mm -hmm. it's interesting because there's, um, there's information out there now, how the people who age the less and who are happiest in their retirement are those who have good relationships more than mm -hmm. whether they exercise more than what they eat more than anything else. They have found that people who live long, healthy, healthy lives and look younger are those who have good relationships. So it, it impacts us in so many ways. Yeah, you know, like if people can hear that and think about that, the regrets of the dying, right? One of the yeah. regrets is not having nurtured their relationships mm -hmm. and spending more time trying to make money or being afraid to speak their truth or what they believe in. But how people would live their lives differently if they really thought about the importance of relationships. When I was going through my divorce, Danita, I, I did the opposite. I cut everybody out. That was when the boundaries were mm -hmm. up and nobody knew. See, a separation happened in January. Nobody knew until July and I had nobody. And it was the roughest oh. road because... I was navigating it by myself and it's like, how much easier would it be? Um, because since then I've like reached out for help and nurtured a lot of good relationships. If um, there were people there just to help, people still showed up. I mean, but they, they had to notice and then push their yeah. way in and say, let me help you with this. Um, otherwise, I don't know what <laughs> would have they happened. Did. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so, yeah, it's really, really such an important topic. And I'm, I thank you so much for being with us today, sharing what you know, I think this is going to be new to a lot of people who have not considered and why do my relationships keep becoming toxic or why do people not yeah. want to be around me or, you know, it's this idea that you look at what's going on with yourself and being aware and then being aware of mm -hmm. what you need and the red flags to what yeah. may not be a good, because it's good to catch it beforehand, isn't it? Then to be yes. in the middle of it yes. and, and turn around yes. and try and undo everything. Yeah. Said a wise man once said, when you're dating, keep your eyes wide open. When you're married, keep them half shut. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That makes a lot of sense, too. <laughs> um, so where can people find you if they want to learn more about you or stay connected with you, Danita? Yeah, so um, I do have a website that's called sparlinglifecoaching.com. Um, and I do have information out there. It, it shares my intense story of what I went through. I actually, because of the stress that I was going through, I did have a mental breakdown that was pretty serious. And at that point, I realized I needed help with my life. And I started, uh, that was t uh, 18 years ago. So mm -hmm. since then, I have been striving to find a way to be healthier. And so that, that kind of shares a little bit of my story on there. And it talks about um, my coaching method, which is called Ignite Your Light, because I believe that the best way to have healthy relationships is to become healthy yourself. Mm -hmm. So I help women to know who they are on the inside and help to become that person. And when they do that, they'll be strong enough to set boundaries and to recognize healthy behaviors and healthy relationships. And so. Um, it goes into detail on there and I'm hoping to eventually have my classes on that website as well. So just, um, family is coming first right now, but I do enjoy moments where I get to talk to people about what I love. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Family is super important. And, um, you, you've left a lot of really like, uh, yeah, I'd really like to learn more about your story. I read about it. Now I want to read it again, because knowing a little bit more about how you help other people, it makes a lot of sense. And then taking that quiz to find out if we're toxic, we probably all are, like you said, and where that might show up. So 
Yeah. Wanted to encourage the listeners to go there and take that quiz. And also I'll be posting the book that you recommended so that they yes. can read that as well. And yes, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more about the courses that you're putting together, just because I know you're constantly studying and um, learning how to help other people and improve what you're doing in your own life. So thank you so much for being here. Yes. Thank you for inviting me. Hopefully we can chat again soon. Yes, I look forward to it, Dory. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, there's so many great pearls. Let me see if I can gather a few for you. So one of the pearls is that everybody can be toxic sometimes. What? I didn't really think about it that way, but yes, definitely. We all have different things that we could be doing in the world that might not be serving us or the people that we love. And so that was a really interesting takeaway. And if you are interested in finding out if you are doing anything that's toxic, then I invite you to take the quiz that Danita mentioned, and I will put the link to the show notes. Also, that setting boundaries is important for you to be able to, to protect yourself and others. So it's as much about you as the person that you're in a relationship with. And that makes perfect sense now understanding that we can be toxic as well. The other great takeaway is that without setting boundaries, you end up feeling burnt out and losing your self-esteem and also feeling resentful. And this can create an overall toxic relationship. So you are responsible for your own protection and nobody else can do this for you. And another great takeaway is that you can't change others. You can only influence them. And that's really only by being compassionate and understanding where they're coming from and then uh, being inspirational and collaborative so that they want to do things that are good for you in a relationship. And also they will be safe and comfortable to be able to share what they need as well. Also, some of the things to know is that when you start setting boundaries, sometimes initially it can be challenging. And so that's why it's really good to get some accountability or have somebody coach you through it. If you're in a situation where you're really uncomfortable doing it or don't feel like you can follow through because it's such an important skill to learn, I think it's a really good investment. You also want to start by thinking about what you need in a relationship and what you refuse to put up with. And you want to approach the other person with compassion and the idea that they're doing the best that they can with what they know. There are some people that are just toxic, which is really unfortunate, but I've also found that to be true in my life. Sometimes you can do what you can and you can put up those boundaries and it's just not going to be respected. And so that's when you're in a situation where you need to make that important decision about whether or not it's worth having this person in your life. And, and that's really a challenge, but I also think it's so important for your own happiness and your ability to feel good about the people that you surround yourself with. As we had said during the interview, the quality of your life is in huge part dictated by the quality of your relationship. So it's a situation where you need to make some hard decisions if the person is toxic. Or Danita shared a couple of qualities that may give you a hint that a person is toxic. One is that that person is controlling, uh, maybe won't let you feel like and be the person that you are. You feel like you need to be completely different from your authentic self when you're around that person. Also, it's another person who generally just makes you feel bad about yourself. And I think a good gauge to consider is how do you feel about that person after you are with them? Do they make you feel uplifted, supported, safe, and good about yourself or the opposite? And if it's the opposite, then maybe that's a person that might be toxic. I hope that this has really sparked um, some really good ideas about what's important in terms of your relationships. And I invite you to maybe have a conversation with somebody about this just to kind of process it a little bit more. And as I said, this is something that I think everybody should know about. If I had known about a lot of this information when I was young, I think that it would have helped so much with all the relationships that I have cultivated through my lifetime. And even as I'm learning it now, so it's never too late, it's been really helpful. And it's affirming to the relationships that have been amazing in my life and also helps me inspect some of the relationships that maybe aren't serving me. And often when the relationship isn't serving you, it may not be serving the other person if you're actually behind the scenes not having good thoughts about that person, release them to find other people that are like-minded so that they can have better relationships for them and you can move on to cultivate the relationships that are really good for you. Thank you so much for listening again. I hope you have an amazing day ahead and remember, lighten up ladies.